Welcome to lesson nine of our module four on confidence intervals. In this lesson, we're going to do another sample problem demonstrating or illustrating the distribution of mu around x bar. This is brought to you by the infamous Dr. Dog. The central limit theorem assures us that x bar is normally distributed around mu with the sigma of the x bar distribution equal to sigma divided by the square root of n. Now what this says is, is that x bar is normally distributed around mu and that it is very tightly clustered around mu in a relationship to the size of the sample. Does it not make sense to you that if x bar is normally distributed around mu, that mu would be normally distributed around x bar. And if mu is normally distributed around x bar, then we need to notice that instead of using sigma, we will use s. So mu is normally distributed around x bar with s of x bar equal to s divided by the square root of n. This is the foundation of inferential statistics. In inferential statistics, one takes a sample of size n and calculates x bar and s. S can then be used to calculate S of X bar because S of X bar is equal to S divided by the square root of N. With X bar and S of X bar, a confidence interval can then be constructed for mu at a given level of confidence. If N is greater than or equal to 30, S is a fairly good predictor of sigma. This is called a large sample confidence interval for mu. A large sample confidence interval for mu can be calculated with the following interval. x bar minus z times s of the x bar distribution and x bar plus z times s of the x bar distribution where s of x bar is equal to s divided by the square root of n. z is determined by the confidence level and remember that this is for a large sample where n is greater than or equal to 30. Now let's go out and look at a, a sample problem that we might do in the sample test that's posted out in the document sharing a random sample of 900 Texas men indicates an average ownership of 1.4 guns with a standard deviation of 0.1 guns. Construct a 99% confidence interval for the true mean. The very first thing that we should notice is that this is a confidence interval problem. When we begin to solve this problem, the very first thing we do is identify the type problem it is. It is a confidence interval. The next question is, is it a population, is it a large sample, or a small sample? To our delight, we restart out with a discussion, a random sample of 900 Texas men. A random sample of 900 indicates to us that this is a large sample. Note here that we're asked to calculate the confidence interval for the true mean. So this is a large sample confidence interval for the true mean. Now we want to read this problem for information. Uh, we notice right off the bat as we read this that a random sample of 900 Texas men indicates an average ownership of 1.4 guns with a standard deviation of 0.1 guns. Construct a 99% confidence interval for the true mean. We notice, first of all, that N is 900. We notice that X bar is 1.4. We notice that S is 0.1. We have a 99% confidence interval, and we can go to our tables and find that our Z-score is 2.58. Now, a large sample confidence interval uses the, uh, the, uses the lower bounds and upper bounds of x bar minus z times s of x bar and x bar plus z times s of x bar. s of x bar is equal to s divided by the square root of n. And over to the right, we have all of our known values. We have our known values of uh, 1.4, 0 0.1, 900, 99%, and z equals 2.58. Next thing we would do is calculate s of x bar. s of x bar is equal to s divided by the square root of n. We plug in s, which is 0 0.1, and n, which is 900, and we have 0 0.1 divided by the square root of 900. We would then take the square root of 900, which is 30. It gives us 0 0.1 divided by 30. So s of x bar then becomes 0 0.003. 
We'll begin first of all. A large sample confidence interval for mu is given by the formula that it's x bar minus z times s of x bar and x bar plus z times s of x bar. Plugging in, we discover that our values become 1.4 minus 2.8 times 0.003 and 1.4 plus 2.58 times 0.003. We would do the multiplication first, so we have 1.4 minus 0 0.0078 and 1.4 plus 0 0.0078 turns out to be 1.39922 and 1.4078. We can now say that we're 99% confident that the true mean lies between 1.39922 and 1.4078. Pretty cool, isn't it?